Welcome to this tutorial on using LumaMap for projection mapping. If you're a total beginner, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I projection mapped this house with a digital facade generated with AI using LumaMap software. I'll walk you through everything step by step, so let's dive in. Before we get started, let's go over the minimum equipment you're going to need. You're going to need a projector, appropriate cables, a copy of LumaMap or a LumaMap trial installed, and a table or an adjustable stand for your projector. If you haven't got a projector yet, I recommend using a short throw projector with at least three to three and a half thousand lumens, or more if your house is a dark color, or if there's a lot of competing light in the environment. I've included a link below to a list of suitable projectors. The first step is to position yourself in front of your house with your equipment. I should say I'm using a house as an example, but you can projection map other structures and surfaces with LumaMap too, and the process will be the same. Make sure you have a long extension cord to run power to the projector. Give yourself plenty of length to work with so you can move the projector around if needed. You might notice that I've put vinyl in the windows of my house to catch the projections, otherwise the light will go straight through the glass. This is optional, but I'll put a link in the description to the product I'm using. At a minimum, close your blinds and curtains. Turn on your projector and plug it into your laptop using a cable with the appropriate connectors for your hardware. HDMI is a common one. Again, make sure you have enough length to allow you to comfortably change your projector position. Your laptop needs to treat your projector as a second display, or what's called an extended display. It shouldn't be mirroring what's on your laptop screen. If it is, you need to change your display settings to extended display. If you're still not sure how to do this, I've put links to some guides for Windows and Mac in the description. When you download and install new software, you might get a security alert pop up on both Windows and Mac systems. These alerts are standard precautions to protect your computer. Rest assured, LumaMap software is safe. There's a link in the description to an installation guide if you run into problems. This is the main interface of the software. This is the canvas, and you can see via this widget that it has the same resolution as my 1920 by 1080 Full HD projector. Click Send to Display. This means we're outputting our canvas to the projector, but we won't see anything from the projector right now since there's nothing in the canvas. Now go to Output Whiteout. This outputs white light from the projector. It's a good idea to turn off all other unnecessary lights at this point. While your projector is emitting white light, check its coverage on the house. Make sure you're hitting all the surfaces you want to project on with light. If your projected image is not large enough, move your projector further back. This is where a long extension cord and cables come in handy. But equally, don't position the projector further back than it needs to be. It's good to be as close to the house as possible while getting the coverage you need. The closer the projector is to the house, the brighter the projections will appear. Any light that doesn't fall on the house is wasted, so you want the house to fill as much of the projector's resolution as possible. I'm using a short throw projector. My house is around 12 meters wide, which is approximately 40 feet, and I've had to set up my projector around 6 meters away, which is approximately 20 feet. Notice how I've had to tilt my projector down. This is very common because many projector lenses are shifted upwards, which is useful if you have the projector on a table and are projecting a presentation up onto a wall, for example. But I want the projections to reach the floor, so I need to tilt the projector forwards. If your projector's lens can be zoomed in and out, just double check that it's fully zoomed out. Also ensure that you haven't got any keystoning applied if your projector supports that function. Now we're ready to start mapping. Mapping means creating a picture of the scene from the projector's point of view. There are two ways you can do this in LumaMap, using a photo or drawing outlines manually. The photo method is usually quicker, but it doesn't work in every circumstance. For example, if you want to project on multiple surfaces that are different distances from the projector, or if your surfaces are very textured. Outlines take more time because you have to draw around your surfaces manually, 
but it works for any surface. I recommend trying the photo method first and then drawing outlines if that doesn't work for you. If you've chosen the outline method, you can skip ahead in the video. Now that you've found your ideal projector position, take a photo of your projection surface from as close to the projector's lens as possible. Make sure you get all the white areas in the photo. If you're not able to get all of your surfaces in the photo, I recommend taking a photo from slightly further back and still giving it a try or switch to the outline method. Transfer the image to your computer using any way you prefer. I'm using AirDrop, but you could use your favorite method like Bluetooth, cloud storage, email, or cable. Disable whiteout. Import the photo into LumaMap. Now is a good time to make sure your projector is focused. Adjust the focus ring until those pixels look sharp. Move a corner handle in the software and take a look at the effect that has on your projection. Can you see how moving the corner handle is transforming the output from the projector? Ultimately, your goal is for the reference photo to match up to the physical house. For example, a feature like a window in the projected photo should map onto the corresponding physical window, and so on. I'm working in the software to move the corner handles, but I'm looking at the house to get visual feedback on how those movements are affecting the projection. This process takes a bit of practice, so don't be deterred if you find it difficult at first. Moving the corner handles has a warping effect on the image. This means that moving one corner handle can drastically affect the lineup of the rest of the image. This is normal. I've found the best approach is to try to make rough alignments at first. I like to focus on a specific feature in the quadrant closest to the corner handle I'm working with. It might be a feature like a window or the edge of a wall and work towards getting those roughly in the right place. Then I work my way around each corner handle in sequence, gradually dialing in the mapping through smaller and smaller adjustments. The corner handles usually end up in a skewed trapezoid shape, something like this. Now I'm practiced at this process, I can do it in less than five minutes, but allow yourself longer while you get the feel for it. If at any time you're not enjoying this process, remember you can always move on to the outline method instead. Your house is mapped when the photo matches up to the physical surfaces. If you've achieved that, then congratulations. Why not give this video a like to celebrate? You can skip past the next section where I explain the outline method. Maybe you found that however hard you tried, you couldn't get things to match up. That could be because you had too much perspective in your photo, or maybe you couldn't get all of your surfaces in the photo. It might just be that you didn't find the process intuitive and you'd prefer to do it another way. In that case, you can try the outline method. Ultimately, you're aiming to draw outlines around all the major features of the structure, like windows, roof lines, and other important architectural elements. The first step is to enable the outline tool. Your canvas will fill with white, and this widget will appear containing some different outlining tools. The line tool is enabled by default. You can draw a line by left-clicking and then moving your cursor and clicking again, creating a line between the two points. Even though I'm drawing the lines in the software, I'm looking at the house to get visual feedback on how to move my cursor and where to place a line. The crosshairs should help you locate your cursor on the house. It takes a bit of getting used to, but you'll get the hang of it really quickly. So you want to outline the main shapes of the surface. To draw around more complex shapes, you can also use the freehand paint tool. If you make a mistake, you can use Ctrl Z on Windows or Command Z on a Mac, or you can use the erase tool to manually erase the black lines. If you want to completely start again, you can click Reset Canvas. It can take a while depending on how detailed you want your outlines to be. I recommend not stressing over tiny little details, just get the major things. This took me under 10 minutes. Yours will obviously look very different from mine. 
Depending on the angle of the projector, it might look a bit skewed or distorted, but that's normal. So congratulations, you've now mapped your house using outlines. Hey, why not hit the like button on this video because now the hard part's done. Now we're ready to start the exciting bit, which is generating facades. Facades are static images used to digitally decorate a house or surface. Launch the AI widget from the toolbar. Here you can see a library of all the presets on offer, organized by category. If you are using the free trial, only the presets in the popular category are available to you, although you can browse all the thumbnails that are included in the full version of the software. Click a thumbnail to start a generation using that preset. They typically take around 15 seconds or less to complete. If you like the look of the preview, then click Upscale to Canvas to load the image into your canvas and see it output from your projector. Click Unload to see your outlines or your photo again, depending on which method you used. There are some advanced features down here. You can add your own prompt to add custom elements to the preset. You could add a negative prompt if there are features you don't want to see in your image. The Keep Structure slider affects how much the generation will respect the lines and architecture of your house. Higher percentages will make it conform extremely strictly. Lower values will allow the generation to be more lenient with the structure for a less rigid appearance. You can change the seed to see a slightly different iteration of the same preset. Also clicking on the preset thumbnail again will initiate a new generation with a new random seed. If you uncheck presets, then you can make your own AI generations from scratch using your own completely original custom prompt combined with these other settings. Up to five of your most recent AI generations are temporarily stored in the five slots at the bottom of the preview pane, represented by these five dots. Your most recent AI generation is stored in the leftmost slot. If you like the image in your canvas, you can export it using export image on the toolbar. You can set a destination and file name for your export and choose from either PNG or JPEG formats. You can use your exports again in the future using LumaMap, or you could load them onto a media player, which you plug into your projector and eliminate the need for your laptop. You could even take your facades and integrate them into more complex projection shows. Well done, you've completed your first projection mapping project. It's a big first step and it'll probably take a couple of repetitions before you feel comfortable with the process. When you have more confidence, you might feel ready to take the next steps in your projection mapping journey, like adding animated elements to your digital facades or building your own shows. Hit that like button down below if you followed all the way to the end. Leave a comment to tell me if you nailed it or if you ran into any issues. If you love your projected creations, why not take a photo and submit it at the link below and you might even get featured as a Luma legend. But for now, congratulations on your first success. I hope your projections look as awesome as these ones.